Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. Not doing greed mode today. We're just gonna mix it up a little bit, do a hard mode run. Um, rather than just mainline like five greed mode runs, have a terrible loss, and then never uh, play it again. Because of frustration. Here's our seed for today. BFL2BRXH. Nothing but high hopes, says Eve, man. I'm just hoping that uh, my... Uh, my mental state holds here. Eve is normally not that tricky a character. That was a pretty aggressive play for pretty much no benefit there. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Just want to pick up an early spirit arm. We should be good. I apologize if my voice is shot. It's it's kind of a necessary uh, necessary function of recording like a ridiculous amount here as I get ready to be gone for a little while. You, it, my ideal situation. Ooh. Halo, right off the bat, is really good. My ideal situation right here is you say, you know, what do you, what do you mean going away? You're going away? Joke's on you. By the time this video goes up, <laughs> goes up? By the time this video goes up, I should be almost back. That's that's the the greatest trick the devil ever pulled, was uh, convincing the world he didn't go away for a little while. Mm, that was a little too close for comfort. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, the hope is that you would, wouldn't even notice. Be relatively seamless same amount of videos unfortunately that means that basically the last two weeks I've had to double output which you know not to toot my own horn too much but we put out a lot of YouTube videos here youtube.com slash northern lion none of them are ever edited unless I quite like strictly cannot avoid it however um, we do put out a lot of them and that's toxic on the voice I'm very excited to not talk for like two days that's gonna be the highlight. I'm excited to have a nine hour flight so that I can just shut up. They come by and ask for water, I'll say, sure, I would like some water, but don't talk to me ever again. Mm, power pill is kind of irrelevant here. Rusted key is fine. Um, we're really looking for a bomb. A single bomb kickstarts this whole uh, bomb revolution here. We get two bombs for one bomb, then there was a tinted rock. We can also get like some other consumables with it, but. Now that I look at it, it may actually not be possible at all. This is the worst situation. Now, let me just not make it too dramatic. We did get the Halo, and the Halo is really good. However, we have a good spacebar item. A spacebar uh, space item that is really essential as Eve here. We can't just up and give it up for the pony. But I guess actually, to put it positively, we're actually... This isn't that bad. Let's try to focus on the bright side. I try to be one of those guys that focuses on the bright side. And the bright side here is that getting the pony allows us to get all those consumables that were otherwise inaccessible to us. And probably allows us to get a spirit heart and maybe get into the Horror of Babylon state for the next floor. So let's just envision uh, that instead of this being bad, we're basically having a version of the... Um, uh, a version of uh, the cardboard box dropped here so that we're actually picking up some good items. So you know, we come in here and grab that, grab that, hit this. Still got two bombs left, not that we need them. Now that we can fly, at least temporarily, get a spirit heart here. I think we'll open up this. There's Cricket's head. Okay, that's pretty good. I think we're going to stick with... Uh, we'll use a bomb here. But we're going to stick with uh, our trinket as we already have it. Uh, rusted key, and hopefully we'll be able to find a good use for that in the future. Ooh, yeah. You know what? I'd love to get an arcade. So let's pay for the wooden nickel. We got seven cents. We already fought our boss in the boss trap room, obviously. Let's just go out here. And that was a really good use of the uh, Headless Horseman there. It basically, from our boss, we got a decent amount of money and a key. We might have had a couple of keys, or we might have had at least one key to start there. But uh, And we also picked up uh, Cricket's Head, which Cricket's Head is the big one there. Did I say Cricket's Head twice? I might have said Cricket's Head twice. That's okay. It happens. Um, let's, uh, let's keep moving on here. I don't really want to use a, uh, our only key there to fight that boss trap room just yet. I do want to do that. I just don't want to do it right now. And this one could be over before it even really gets started in a, in a way that's very, very positive for us. Like a textbook kind of Eden situation. All we need to do is get a good deal with the devil here. Hopefully something that's not mom's knife or brimstone because it can be a little boring, but, uh, like a, an early death's touch pickup. That's all I ask for. Get HP. I might get it eventually. I don't like fighting Krampus early, but I will admit, as as much as it pains me, it can give you some interesting... Uh, no, we don't really want Krampus to head. It can give you some interesting consequences on a run. Uh, as you find yourself 
living in a shotgun shack, and you may find yourself in another part. Okay, but you you can find yourself, sure, behind the wheel of a large automobile. It does happen. Um, you may ask yourself, you know, how did I get here? But at the same time, the big deal is we could find ourselves getting deals with the angel now, which can lead to runs that are really fun, or it can lead lead to runs that are really frustrating. Those are the two principal options. Hopefully more fun than frustrating. Some Sacred Heart uh, Godhead action would be pretty sweet. That's relatively poor damage. Now we got two keys though. We can do the boss trap room. Uh, we'll actually do the shop instead because we picked up the quarter from our item room. Uh, then we'll take Mom's purse, I guess, and I'll see what this card's all about too. It's a stars card. Probably uh, best served on a bed of uh, romaine lettuce but also best served uh, as a, a boss trap teleporter if i do say so myself red patch isn't that good we'll be looking for maybe petrified poop here rusted key isn't even necessarily that good and even more so than petrified poop it's just because this room is pretty full of poop that i thought that that could be relevant but um it would be beautiful if we could get uh you know cancer and curve torn or something like that the old uh c and ch combo you go to the store, you say, give me a C and CH, they know what you're asking for. They will not know what you are asking for, and in my experience, they will not hesitate to call security. So let's come down here. I think I'm going to be a little bit of a bad boy. I'll always fancy myself sort of the Isaac, uh, the bad boy of the Isaac community. And we're not going to teleport out of this, but we are, as soon as we get down to the next floor, going to save a key um, by teleporting into the item room instead of saving it for boss rush, because... I want to pick up another item as soon as possible. Well, we did pick up another key right away, so now I look like a, li a little impatient, but it happens. Nah, there's a second secret room there. Okay, well, maybe there is reason to use our key here. We still have a fool card to draw from as well. Okay, plenty of keys here now. Um, we got five keys. Now it doesn't make sense to use the stars card like that, but ooh, we will take paperclip. And I think we'll take paperclip rusted key. What was our other card? The fool? I'm still going to use the stars card exactly as intended. That floor ended up being okay. I mean, it was the best thing for us there was that it was good, consumably speaking. All right, let's put a bomb down here. If there's anything good, we'll grab it. Uh, yeah, there's something good. Goathead and Fate are both pretty good. Teleport out of there and get Common Cold. Uh, it's a pretty amazing start there. Now we've got the ability to fly. Uh, we've got poison damage. We've got some extra HP. We've got non-stop deals with the devil. And uh, truth be told, we probably have a pretty easy ticket to victory here. If the last floor was a little weak, this one uh, made up for it pretty quickly. Two more keys. I will trade uh, a bomb for the chance of money. And that one did work out. And we might as well fight the boss right away. I mean, we're mostly in this for the deal with the devil items now. But if you want to give me deals with the angel, I'm completely okay with that too. I, I, I could find this amenable. I don't know if that's how you use that word. Amenable? No, it's amenable. But I don't know if, it, if, it's, if it's a good thing, it's a bad thing. Old bandage is okay as long as we're holding razor blade. You know what? Let's, let's make some interesting stuff happen here. Let's ignore Book of Shadows or Book of Sin. No matter what book was in there, I was going to ignore it probably. Um, I don't want it as a spacebar item on principle because we already... Wow, that's pretty good. Uh, because we already have a, a spacebar item that is going to serve us very well over the course of the game. But beyond that, I, uh, I want to see if we can actually get good deals with the Angel. And there's pretty much no risk to ignoring that. I mean, we're already getting pretty strong here. If it all goes wrong, it all goes wrong. But I doubt it will. Let's take Battery Baby. And a magician, addicted. Addicted doesn't do anything for us here, positively or negatively, which uh, you know mostly is a good thing. Maintain the status quo when the status quo is working for us. You know, having pills ain't everything. Not having them is. That's what Kanye West and T Pain taught me. They didn't actually teach me that. It sounds like they taught me how to abuse prescription drugs. I'm, uh, you know, not making light of, of addiction in the least, but I think, uh, I just, I just don't have the, uh, the mental, you know, the, the mental receptors to be that into prescription drugs. Like, my, my doctor gave me a prescription for Ambien. I was like, I'm going on a flight. This was last year, last January 2015. I was like, I'm going on a flight. It's going to be like 12 hours long. I'd like to be able to sleep. She's like, okay, I can give you some Ambien. And I was like, some Ambien? 
The lady gave me 12 Ambien for free, because apparently that's, she had some deal with the pharmaceutical company or something, and I was like, you go, girl, you get paid. Those 12 Ambien lasted me um, 12 months. Once a month, it would be like 4 a.m., and I'd be like, I'd really like to get some sleep, and I'd take half an Ambien. And it would, then I'd wake up the next day and be like, I don't know if I should have taken that prescription medicine. It was a little over the top there, Northern Lion. Um, but I, I have to admit, half an Ambien and then actually closing your eyes instead of just watching your cell phone all night is, uh, is a really good way to fall asleep. I would recommend it. If, if you have sleeping trouble. If you don't, just, just relish in that. That's the greatest pharmaceutical of all is a, you know, healthy, uh, limbic system. I don't know if that's actually what your limbic system does, but I should, but it's better. You know, you don't have to remember that stuff once you get out of school. You may have to remember that stuff, depending on where you go in your life, but you realize that, uh, you know, like, 90% of what you learn in school before your master's is basically just widening your knowledge, and you're not going to use too much of it. Then when you actually, like, get your master's PhD, assuming you're going to in academia or something like that, that's when, at that point, you go, oh, shit, okay, we're going to learn, like, a lot of stuff about one very specific subject. As someone who doesn't have my master's, that's my, that's my way of looking at things, I guess. Um, secret room kind of sucked. Let's go fight our mob trap room. I don't think I'd give up razor blade for shoop to whoop. What's a bit of a problem here is that we have no uh, no keys thanks to that bombs or key pill. So I may just bum rush the boss and get out of here. I don't really want to farm for keys on this floor. We're strong enough to not have to worry about it. But if we get keys, which we did, um, we will use them. Not on the shop so much even though we have the money. Item room is going to be our number one priority. That was terrible damage. Uh, another possibility is that we just get... Oh, that was even worse. Another possibility is we just get a bombs or key pill. A second one. We already know they exist on this run. Okay, now that we have two keys, we probably will go back for it. But I hold out some hope that maybe we'll get a, uh, a hermit card and save us, you know, four rooms of walking. Maybe not that big of a deal when you put it that way. Sure, uh, we don't have Lump of Coal, which actually can make uh, my reflection not so bad. But I take my reflection pretty much on principle regardless. I don't think it's a great item. In fact, I think it might be worse than it is good. But it has the chance to be okay. So as people uh, never, never neglect to point out, it does make sense to take Red Hearts with the Razor Blade as Eve or with Horror of Babylon in general. Because if you can just pop those Red Hearts to gain an advantage... Um, you get, you get a little extra damage on the room that you use the razor blade in, so... There is some... Logic to doing so. Sometimes I skip it out of laziness, that shouldn't be a foreign, uh... Feeling to you, uh, given, given my experience with the game. Or given your experience watching me play the game. Alright, this is where it all comes back to us, this is where we get, uh... This is where we get brimstone. And by brimstone, I mean, well, not brimstone. <laughs> One of those nice uh, deal with the angel items that's, uh, you know, good but not so good as to be threatening. That was my own shot, but it scared the shit out of me for a second there. Liberty cap over one of our existing trinkets? I'm gonna say no. I mean, it seems like a good synergy. I'm actually more impressed than anything else that this guy found his way over the bridge that we created. But, um, I, uh, there we go. I uh, do, 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 do like the synergy here between Rusted Key, which I believe has the potential to give us more golden chests, more chests at least, and then uh, the Paperclip, which gives us the ability to unlock golden chests for free. It seems like that could be a, a match made in heaven here, especially if we pick up uh, Guppy's Tail, Wink Wink, Nudge Nudge, maybe a deal with the Devil Chance, add it to the Christmas list. Okay, Magic Gate Ball, not great. The Magician, not a great payout, payout there either. Um, we do get the Miter. The Miter is a good payout. Although, I don't know where we're gonna get, uh, rid of all of our freaking Red Heart containers to be able to fill up with Spirit Hearts, but certainly not a bad pickup. Yeah, that almost went south pretty quickly. Um, we're gonna just take the, the key piece. I don't know if we'll actually fight Mega Satan on this run. It, it sort of feels a little underpowered for that right now, but, you know, after Boss Rush, we may feel differently. Not just boss rush, but, you know, possibly hush, but probably not. But also, like, another five or six deal with the angels probably await us here. We're only 30 seconds or so ahead of schedule um, for for boss rush. So, our work's cut out for us there. 
if we if we even decide that that's what we want to do. But the run's good. It could just use a little something. And a reroll, uh, it can help us get that little something. So I'm not picking up HP now because uh, we have Curse of the Unknown. I can already see the questions out there. You said it was good to pick it up. Well, yes. Yes and no. Situationally, um, seems sensible here. I mean, in practice, we could pick it up and then uh, just wait for it to tell us. Like, hit the space bar until it tells us we're in the Horror of Babylon state. But I don't really want to mess about with that. Put ourselves in a tricky spot, potentially. Considering our financial situation, I don't think Swallowed Penny matters. Addicted, Tears Up. Okay, Tears Up is, as I've said many times uh, recently, I don't want to say it's controversial, but some people definitely disagree. Um, I, I kind of consider Tears Up to be like, maybe the best pill in the game, to be honest with you. It's the one that has the greatest uh, control, or uh, the greatest impact on your offensive output, which I think has the greatest impact on your chances of winning. Bad bomb, but we have enough. Might are paying through, uh, or coming through in spades here already. Okay, we did get the the champion there, which was the big uh, Kahuna Burger. Pop up! Don't split into multiple enemies. Even better. Okay, this could be a secret room. I sort of doubt it, but we have enough bombs to take a lark on it. Ooh, we got lucky. I kind of thought it was the one over there as well. So to find it on first play is pretty nice. I hate this room. They left a whoa, they left a wide open space for me, and I blew it, man, but we still got through. Now. You know what? I think I will take the black feather over the uh, rusted key. It's a small damage up for every item you get that gives you an evil upgrade. So as of right now, it is going to be not meaningless because we have uh We have Goat Head, which is an evil up, if I remember correctly. So this actually is like 0.3 damage. Now, that might not sound that impressive, but I'm kind of holding out hope that we pick up one or two more, you know, evil items. And as a result, we find ourselves uh, with basically a free small rock, and we can also get small rock. Like, it's not like it takes up the small rock slot. Okay, get your cube of meat. Uh, we'll take the body so we live. And I don't really want to use Perthro yet, is kind of what I'm getting at. Um... I like having this extra fodder for survival. Now that I think about it, I'm like, probably should have rerolled the body. But I also, with Curse of the Unknown, I was a little concerned that we were not going to, uh... That we're not going to live through this floor. But thinking about it now, that was probably a little bit of a shitty play. Or, or a large shitty play. That's the other option. Um, problem with not using Perthro is that we can't take any other cards. Also, taking the body is taking me out of the Horror Babylon state. But I don't really want to use the razor blade because I don't know the specifics of the situation. We'll use a key for this. It doesn't bother me. Um, this probably screws us out of boss rush, honestly. Unless maybe our shop has, like, Diplopia. Then I'll make an extra effort to rush for it. We'll take starter deck. And it's the world card. That's actually pretty good for the future. Uh, let's blow this up. And it's another nickel. I really, really wanted that to be our item room. But we're not too far behind schedule. In about 45 seconds, I'm going to start to get a little pissed about this. But for now, I'm not mad. We use the world card on the next floor. Plan accordingly. We can go to boss trap. If we want. And we may not want to. And that's that's also totally fine. You know, is man not entitled to the sweat of his don't have a cow, man? I'd really like to just kill everything on this room instantly without requiring my own impact. It's not going to be very doable. and eh, I might get the job done. Another black heart. I like it. You know what? Yeah. I will do this. I will take Unicorn Stump and reroll the Razor Blade. Unicorn Stump with a cube of meat is too good. Mystery Sag is okay. My best friend is not very good. D20 takes off our spacebar slot. My best friend is really bad. But the other one was punching bag. My mistake. Okay, we gotta forget me now. We can't do it. I'm sorry. This is this situation creates a bullshit false dichotomy that always annoys me. Because people go, I thought you were gonna play zany. Yo, giving up the razor blade to take unicorn stomp is a little zany. Everybody's got everybody thinks what their choice is is the zaniest option. Oh, you gave up Tammy's head for the D100. I thought you were playing zany. 
Okay, where are we going? Let's go this way. Um, I mean, this is a great situation. We're, we were actually really low on HP. Uh, that was a little dangerous. Um, obviously, we're looking for something like Midas Touch. That would be incredible. If we don't get Midas Touch, hey dog, we have an orbital. If we don't get anything beyond that, we're still doing pretty well here. But I would like to actually, at this point, maybe disavow Whore of Babylon. And just pick up as much HP as possible. Polyphemus. Holy shit. That's pretty good. So we got an Empress card and a Joker. Two of Hearts I'll use, even though it's obviously not the most uh, interesting play immediately. This is still really good though. I, I basically, I loathe to give up the, that's not very good. To give up the chance to have a Unicorn Stump. It just synergizes so well with so many things. What's your problem, Ruka? You know, you don't like it? You can leave. Too bad BFF wasn't in there, but we, we still made out okay. I mean, pay to play is not that good, but we got to donate. There's, there's some satisfaction in donating, right? It's the problem with having Curse of the Blind, you know? We don't really know what we're going to do with it. Uh, or we don't really know what we're getting. You know the expression, life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get? You should have said life is like a Curse of the Blind shop, you never know what you're going to get. Would have been a much more universal reference. Forrest Gump. If that is your real name. Which it, it was, it was. Okay, deal with the angel. We'll take the Polaroid. We'll take this. No need to fight the angel statue. Spear of Destiny is a weird one. But might be good? Here's what I'm thinking. Take this bad boy. Roid Rage is actually okay. I'm thinking you walk into these guys as much as possible. Like, our damage is good enough that even though we don't have Whore of Babylon, we're not in a bad spot. You know, we're not going to take a hundred years to kill an enemy. Guardian Spear is helpful in that regard as well. It does still move to attack enemies. It's a little weird though. Oh, that was bad damage. Okay. So as, as I've explained, we should be fine. But the best laid plans of mice and men, yada, yada, yada. Sometimes we'll have a problem here. So looking to kill enemies who die easily. All of the fucking enemies we've fought so far have split into multiple enemies and been annoying as hell or like had time gated access to their next phase. You're being real fucking annoying right now, game. I just want you to know that. Sweet. You got something to. Oh, there we go. Okay, the angel statue is totally killable. The frail is actually pretty gettable if we find ourselves in a nice position there. This is a really, really good run. I may want to rethink boss rush in the future. It's just a little ambitious. But Roid Rage for a speed upgrade is going to be really good for us in the future. Like, I don't want to insult the item we actually did pick up. Not only does it contribute towards spun, but um, we get the benefit of uh, being able to get to enemies faster. This is exactly what we're looking for, by the way. Is the ability to just nuke down one whole enemy every single time we pop a unicorn stump. If we could get two, even better, but it's not likely. So one, one gets the job done. Good enough, good enough. Polycephalus is going to be a pain in the ass, but he never actually got to be a pain in the ass. Nice. Lucky us. Starting to internalize which angel statue is which. That's scary, uh, that's scary for the game, because if I start not dying against those angel statues, it's going to have a bad time. Oh, Dingle. Sweet Dingle never had a chance. Now, the Gurglings are not my ideal choice. Please stop striking fear into the hearts of the enemy. Eh, gurglings are easy enough. Okay, Gertie Jr. Any enemy you can get in like a single rotation, you gotta feel as positive. And any enemy that you can't is temporarily public enemy number one. This is, we, we've matured into this run, I think. We, we've come into our own. It's a coming of age tale. 
What the hell happened to Pin there? He separated his body into more segments than a book turned into a successful Hollywood film franchise. hi -o! I'm looking at you, The Hobbit and The Hunger Games, also Divergent, also uh, Maze Runner, also blah, 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 blah. Not that I'm cynical. I mean, I didn't know any of those books before they were made into movies anyway, so I'm, I'm part of the casual audience, the casualista. Okay, we're done. We got tech point five. Was that worth it? I would say that was totally worth it. We may end up fighting Mega Satan on this. Are we going to fight Hush? Uh, pretty much under no circumstances can I imagine that happening. And this is what we, uh, basically what we paid for. This is the reason we were around here. Wheel of Fortune. Lovers. Lovers is good. We don't need to protect our spirit hearts at all. It's, it's nice to have them, but we don't need to protect them. Um, we went to that boss rush so we could feel good about coming in here and steamrolling all these rooms in like two seconds. And this is the the real value of Unicorn Stump. Is is not in the damage that it does, or the invincibility that it grants. It's the morale boost that it gives you, man. The ability to walk into a room, have no chance to take damage, and have enemies feel your power is just it's beautiful. Love knows no bounds. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. There you go, get that done. I do wish I could reliably aim with Guardian Spear while using Unicorn Stump, but we only recently got Guardian Spear to begin with before we weren't doing any damage with our tears while in Unicorn Stump phase. So, to be honest with you, I think we should just be happy we're here. Two of clubs, it's okay. Blast Assist is uh, a suboptimal Unicorn Stump related boss. As a result, <laughs> man, I can't believe I didn't get hit there. As a result of. Uh, it's multiple uh, personality situation there. You know what? We per throw that. We're probably never going to get value out of Little Brimstone, but we might as well take it. Head down to the next floor. Unicorn Stump is basically no good against Hush, so I am going to skip that with Reckless Abandon. I will say the one thing I want on top of what we already got is Toxic Shock. Make it a little easier for me to smoke enemies. Little Brimstone's charging up quickly. I mean, the Tech Point 5 bonus is basically just like infinite range, high damage shots. I like it. Considering we have Polyphemus, um, those Tech Point 5 shots are going to pack quite the punch. This run ended up being a little easier than I than I had originally assumed. I uh, probably bet you like 10 bucks that Eternal Heart doesn't live to the next floor. I still hate these guys, man. That'll never change. I think I said like nearly the same thing verbatim in the last episode, but I absolutely mean it. This charge is going to seem really long because we got a battery charge somewhere in the middle of it for some reason. But it's a it's a large room. I don't mind giving a large room the, the large th the demands it requests. Decent. Bob's Curse isn't bad. Two of Spades is fine. Um, the Hermit card I find basically irrelevant, um, which is why I'm going to take it for some reason. <laughs> Probably should have taken uh, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, I guess this can take us closer to the boss if we if we desire such a thing. We gave up one room of Unicorn Stomp. I'll never, I'll never be able to come to terms with the fact that it, that room took me an extra 15 seconds that I could have spent thinking about taking a shit. But what's done is done. You know, that that time is lost to the ether. It's starting to look like that uh, Eternal Heart might actually make it out of this floor. Much to my surprise. Strength is a little better. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I'm actually gaining a lot of HP. But don't let it fool you. You're going to be like, do hush, you pussy. No, this isn't a hush run. It's like eating potato chips for dinner. Is it 2,000 calories per, per bag? Maybe. Uh, that doesn't make it a dinner, though. Calories alone do not make a dinner. You gotta have some semblance of sides or vitamins in there. Why are we getting so many battery charges? We, we we did get battery baby, right? So maybe that's what's doing it. Maybe the the baby that gives us batteries is what's happening here. 
Yeah, we'll take both of these. Black Powder. We're pretty fast. And the Pact. Uh, and then we'll head through here. And do we fight Mega Satan on this run? Why? Why not? Why not do a crazy dance? Why not take a crazy chance? Hillary Duff. Former, former hockey wife and multi-platinum recording artist. It's true. She was married to someone in the NHL. I think it was Mike Fisher. I can't remember. Because there's like Alicia Cuthbert. Was married to one. You know what? Let's take Wheel of Fortune back. Um, then there was like Carrie Underwood was married to one maybe. And then there was uh, Hillary Duff, Carrie Underwood, Alicia Cuthbert. I think that's the, that's the three. That's the holy trinity of the NHL hockey wives. We don't really have uh, you know wife and girlfriend culture for for sports. To the best of my knowledge in North America, but there is a television show on TV. On the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Well, that's so silly. You have a broadcast network named after your country. Why you what about the USA Network, fuckers? Okay? You think, you think you're think uh, you beyond us? I don't think so. You want to watch Burn Notice, you got to turn to a channel called USA. You, might as you just got handed your Burn Notice. Even though you are a straw man that I created myself. Um... I am a little surprised we didn't get hit there. But yeah, there's a show called Hockey Wives. Ryan Miller's wife on it. He's the goalie for the Vancouver Canucks. He's not having a good time this year. He's, you know, he's given us, he's given us his all. The team's just not there. There's, there's some ill will. It's a, it's a whole to do. But on the show, you can watch his wife, you know, get ready to be a mom. I'm not even being rude about it at all. I'm not trying to imply anything. I'm just saying that's what's on the show. There's nothing wrong with it. Might not be your cup of tea. Speaking of which, you can watch them making cups of tea for sure. That's that's actually the mid-season cliffhanger. One of these days. You know what? Yes. One of these days we're going to find this boss fight. It hasn't really been that long of a run. I guess I... And being a little bit belly achy here. There we go. Oh, I wasted it! Oh no. Thank you, Infamy. I got a little bit too big for my britches there, and uh, you made sure I didn't get punished, but I still got the warning loud and clear. Good dodge. That one was never gonna happen. Infamy is coming through in the clutch. One more barrage should do it. Ooh! Probably like two more tiers in general would have done it. I guess we sh really should try to keep our HP high. Also, we did get a uh, battery charge at some point there and I had missed it. That's my mistake. Let's do this Mega Satan fight though. Wheel of Fortune, pop it down, open it up, teleport. Rotten Baby's great. Ares is at least a mild speed upgrade. Holy Water sucks. The Soul is actually really good for the Mega Satan fight. I'm ready. Where are we gonna use, uh... Where are we gonna use uh, Unicorn Stump? When there's something strange in your neighborhood, when are you gonna use Unicorn Stump? Unicorn, Unicorn Stump, Unicorn Stump, Unicorn, Unicorn, Corn Stump. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, first off, I don't want to get sued by Ray Parker Jr. Secondly, um, we really should be using it all the time because we keep getting these mysterious battery charges, maybe from Battery Baby, so we might as well give the game every opportunity to... Uh, to buff us, you know, if they want to give us more unicorn stump charges, absolutely fine by me. Wow, that was really, really fast. Decent damage, right? Better than decent, really good damage. Should be good enough, and watch out for the remaining enemies. Thank you. I wanted to disrupt the spawn here so we could make a little easy space for ourselves. Still got hit, but not too badly. I mean, we've got tons of HP left. That is the most I've ever been hit by that attack. Still good amounts of HP left, but it was a bit of a sobering moment when it comes to my lack of skill at the game sometimes. Lack of, uh, lack of attention, at least. Because it's not like we've never seen that attack before. Okay. Almost on the final phase. Maybe one more. Yep. Yeah. Series of barrages. There's a battery charge. Um, do you just get in there? I think we wait until our reroll, not our reroll, our orbital's back at the front and then we go for it, which is exactly what happened right there. Always looks so beautiful with the soul, too. 
you know, pushing the shots away like that. Mind you, it did push them all back here. <laughs> we got the job done, but it, for a second there, I thought we might have fucked ourselves. All right, that was a good run. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.